Hello and welcome back to the Python Trading Bot series. In the last episode, we had a look at building our trading bot in QuantConnect. We managed to do so and we clicked the, we ended on clicking the backtest button and letting it go. So here you can see the backtest has fully run now. And in this episode, we're going to be analyzing the backtest, digging in deeper and finding out why it performed how it did. Now, if you haven't seen the previous episodes, make sure to check those out. There'll be a card uh, on the video and I'll link the playlist in the description below because we're going to be covering a lot of what we've covered in previous episodes. So starting off, um, it, it made money, which is which is cool. But as you can see, it's it's not exactly what we wanted. We were practically losing money until until late 2016. And then we had you know, a big jump and then a bit of a wavy ride since. Just because it makes money doesn't mean that it's working well. And uh, we're going to be digging into why this is. Um, we can have a look at the uh, figures on the top. So just a, a quick one, this um, percentage figure up here, this is the probabilistic sharp ratio. And this is basically saying the chance that the sharp ratio, so that's the um, returns over risk, is greater than one. So you can see here 0.1% chance that the uh, sharp ratio for this um, trading bot is greater than one. So, I mean, uh, as you can see, I, I mean, it, it makes money, it makes a 113% return, but that over a period of 17 years um, ain't too great. Right, and now let's have a look at the one of the biggest problems um, for our performance, and that is the fees that we've incurred. So you can see we started off with $100,000 and we actually ended up spending $245,000 on fees. And you're, you're gonna come across fees, that's, that's, a, that's a given, but the, um, what you want to do is limit those fees and try and minimize those fees as much as you can while not hindering performance. And you can see that our portfolio actually would have made a net, well, would have made a, I think that's meant to be gross profit of $347,000, so it would be you know, way up here with a, with a much higher return. But obviously, a big chunk of that was taken away by fees. And then over on the top right, you can see our trading volume. So in those 17 years, we traded $203 million worth. Okay, cool. So what we also want to do is check that our trading bot is trading what we're meaning to trade. So our factor is free cash flow yield factor. So we should see the sim same sort of performance that we saw in our Quant Quantopian notebook when we were researching it using alpha lens in our back test. So let's have a look at loading that up now. Cool, so you can see we've uh, loaded up the notebook. Luckily, all our results are saved. So if we head down to this, so this is the factor weighted long short portfolio. So this is similar to what we should be seeing um, in our trading bot. There will be a few, well, there will be differences. A, because this is taking into account all of the stocks in the universe. B, this is group neutral. So this is not having any sector or industry bias. So yeah, that, it, it is gonna be different, but we should see the same sort of trend. So when it goes up quite rapidly, we should expect to see our trading bot go up quite rapidly as well. And so it's good to identify certain points where there are I'd say events, either when the factor portfolio goes up or it goes down sharply. So let's compare this to our trading bot performance. As you can see, you can't really see much um, with this. We can we can have a look. So if we look at this first part, um, we can see we have a, a big dip mid 2003 to, uh, to, to late 2004. Um, I mean, almost 2005. So that, that is reflected in our in our factor portfolio. So that's one thing to back up that this is doing what, what we want it to do. And let's see, it was around 2008 to 2009 that we have quite good performance for our factor. So let's just uh, zoom out. And yep, you can see 2008 to 2009 is a bit of a bit bit, bit of an increase here, which is which is which is. You know, kind of, kind of reflecting our fact portfolio, and then straight after that, bit, bit of a dull period. Good, good growth in the mid part. We are seeing similarities between it. So, you know, I, I conclude apprehensively from this that 
it is doing how we expect it to um, to function. But just looking at this, it isn't good enough. So we can have a look at charting a few extra plots to dig in deeper to it. So let's first start off with how we actually do charting. So here I've just created a new algorithm. You can easily clone algorithms in uh, Quant Connects, and I added the uh, the charting onto it. So this is it will produce the same back test, but we'll just have charts uh, alongside it. So the changes uh, in the main script is we've got uh, in its charts. So this comes from uh, our charting file in here, which I'll go into afterwards. And then we schedule our charting. Um, and currently at the moment, Quant Connect has a limit of 4,000 data points per chart. Um, and there are more than 4,000 days between now and the start of 2003. So we're going to plot this every, so this is using their, their date rules and their time rules again. So this was when we were looking at uh, using the, so uh, well, I mean, you can see here when we schedule our rebalancing, we're doing it every day, every trading day and at one o'clock. Here we're doing it every Friday and we're doing it at market close for the US. And we do our plot charts function, which is down here, uh, where we just call uh, two, two charts. So let's head into our charting script. Now we want two charts to dig into it a bit more. So we've got our performance breakdown chart, and this is going to show us our total fees and our total gross profit. So rather than what we saw before, which was just what our equity looked like, which is net of a net of fees, um, we can see what our portfolio would have done without fees. I say would have done without fees. If we didn't have fees, then uh, the returns will be amplified because we're not being harmed by them. I'll try and explain that better when we when we get through to looking at the uh, back test results. So that's going to be one of our plots. And then the other plot is going to be our position concentration. So we're going to be looking at our largest long position and our largest short position. So the largest weight for a single security in our portfolio. Cool. And then we've got our little two functions. So this is, sorry, this is uh, initializing it. Uh, we just add these charts. It's just a simple algorithm dot add chart. You can see this is how you uh, declare and instantiate charts and then add series to them. And uh, here we're just doing the plotting. So this was uh, what you saw we did every Friday at market close. Um, we put, plot this performance chart, which is a quite a simple one. We just do algorithm.portfolio.totalfees. So that gives us the total fees on that date. And then the total profit, total gross profit on that date. And then for the position concentration, it's a bit more difficult. Um, we basically loop through every security in our portfolio. We double check that it's invested. Um, and then we take the absolute holdings value of it. Um, we can't get the exact portfolio weights straight from the algorithm.portfolio, but we can calculate that ourselves. So we say um, if it's long, so th this uh, V here is the, is the equity holding objects. And this is where you can check whether they're invested, their absolute holding values, um, and whether you're long or, or, or short it. Um, and so we basically loop through and we do a simple, if it's greater than our long max value, then we make it our long max value, just a, a simple find the biggest. So we do that for our long and our short. We then divide that by our total holdings value to get the weights, uh, as you can see here. And then we just plot those two. Cool. So that's pretty much what it is to, to charting. Um, and now we can have a look at the actual results. So what you do, click back to again, and you'll see along with your normal charts, you'll also get two other charts, the um, performance breakdown and the position concentration. Um, and so I actually ran one earlier. So here is one I made earlier. So you can see we've got the same performance, same back test, same algorithm, same trading bot. There might be very slight discrepancies, just there isn't going to be any massive changes to the overall performance. So first, let's have a look at our performance breakdown chart. And you can see the blue line is the total fees and the white line is our total gross profit. So you can see the, the, the total fees basically dampen this um, chart up here and uh, we can see that this is uh, you know more 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 reflective of our factor portfolio you, i mean you, yeah you can see the the trends you see this little hump 
here. You can see that, see that there on the facts portfolio. So this better confirms that TradingBot is, is doing what we want. As you can see, fees are increasing at a pretty steady rate over time. Obviously, um, fees increase with a higher, higher portfolio value. So when we get to uh, the uh, higher amounts, we're generating more fees. Lower amounts, we're generating fees at a lower rate. Um, so I'd say, uh, looking from this, specifically the, um, this total gross profit, I'd say it reflects pretty, pretty um, similarly the um, factor weighted back test that we ran um, in Alpha Lens. Yeah. So what I was saying about uh, the curve almost being flattened, um, because we're incurring these fees, that means that we're not investing what our portfolio value would be if we didn't have fees. So obviously, if you take away the fees, that means that you have less buying power, and therefore you can't generate better returns. So the more money that that you have. You know, further along the line, the steeper the line will be. It's almost like you need to shift up, shift up that graph a bit more if you wanted the zero fees um, back test, and then that would obviously look a bit more like this. So yeah, I mean, it, and 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 this shows that there is there is good positive performance. Um, it just shows that our our fees are a massive problem. You can see we're only we're only going higher. We're only breaking even um, in in late two thousand eight. At the very start, and then finally, when we get our break in uh, 2016, that's obviously not what we want. We want to be uh, minimizing fees so that we can actually keep this total gross profit performance showing in our above our initial um, initial value. And also, this um, latter part here from 2016 is also I, I'd call it worrying. Actually, no, I, I wouldn't call it worrying. I, I'd just call it something to investigate, especially this this drop here. And, and this is, uh, I think, a um, uh, very good indicator of another problem that we, uh, another massive problem that we face with uh, the current trading bottom where it's at. Um, and that is to do with position concentration. It's always been said that diversification is um, an investment manager's free lunch. If you diversify your portfolio by, ha by having um, multiple securities in your portfolio, then you reduce the unsystematic risk. Um, and that is uh, that is a given. That's you know one of the number one things uh, taught when you when you look at investment management. Um, and what we can see here, we've got our position concentration. And you see in this period here is more what we want to see. Um, we see neither the long side or the short side for a single security breaches ten percent of our total portfolio value. Um, and depending on how many securities you're planning to have in your portfolio, ten percent might be way too much. But we can see these massive spikes here where, you know, there, there are times when our, our long side is just one single security. Um, introduce some massive load of specific risk, which is what, what we don't want. And, um, you know, this positive performance here is, is also risk. Yes, it is positive, but, you know, what's to say that it could have just gone the complete other way, which is what happens here. And we can see here when we're mousing over, if we go to the peak, of um, our total gross profit, this little peak here, we can see down below in the position concentration, there we go. You can see it lines up with us having a short position of, of pretty much half our portfolio. And um, obviously that short position went a bit wrong. Um, and so we lost a load of money there. You can see that that short position rapidly decreases at the same time as our um, portfolio value. Uh, and so this is what we don't want. This so so this performance from um, twenty seventeen onwards is likely driven by um, coincidental um, specific uh, stock returns, and we want to be get we 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 don't want that. We we want our factor returns. We want what our factor is giving us. So this is another step to address. So we want to address our fees and our position concentration, um, and so that's what we're going to be looking at in the next episode when we look at um, optimizing our portfolio with given constraints. So um, in this episode, just to recap, we looked a little bit about charting. Um, so you can chart whatever you want. Um, in the next episode, we'll actually be looking at charting a bit more, adding in a few more charts, just to see if our optimization is working uh, how we want it to. And then we also had a bit of a look at analyzing our backtest, finding out why it went up when it did, why it went down when it did, and 
comparing that to our factor performance to make sure that our training bot is performing how we want it to. Cool, so this is, yeah, just a quick quick look at um, our back tests and just a quick one actually. Um, I'll see if I can find the back test. I'm, I'm not sure that I, I will be able to actually. Um, but uh, I run a back test. I think one or two parameters were different, which I think the, the number of uh, stocks might have been different or something like that. And so this actually meant that there was one, one point where we took uh, we took a short position in a, a certain stock and it well i mean it was it was you know trundling along and then whoosh, crashed down to to zero pretty much and then just flatlined since then um and actually uh, i took a look in a, a bit further you can get the orders um you can download the orders um, i think you need to be doing a bit of a shorter back test to be able to get all the orders but you can download the orders that the um, training bot made. Really nice feature on uh, on Quant Connect. And uh, I saw that we took a short position in, um, I think it was a pharmaceutical stock. And so um, I looked it up and uh, on just on Yahoo Finance, and uh, you could see we took the short position. So obviously it had a, a really bad factor value. Um, we took a short position, and then the stock just rocketed up about. I mean, I don't know how many percent, but we got margin called, um, you know, in, in, in the back test, and it basically ruined our whole portfolio. It, it went us down to zero. So that's just another, just a little anecdote of um, of why you want to reduce your positions constraint, why you want to diversify your portfolio. Um, I mean, you can see all sorts of research. Um, it's in the maths. Uh, of uh, why we want diversification. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a like and uh, subscribe. Turn on notifications if you want to be notified when the next episode's out. So that's, uh, we're gonna be looking at optimizing our portfolio to start minimizing these fees, reducing this position of concentration. And as always, you can drop me a message on LinkedIn, tweet me on Twitter, leave a comment down below. If you've got any suggestions, questions, whatever, I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.